me, every day should be World Penguin Day. Uh, to put it simply, it's really hard not to love penguins. They're enormously charismatic animals. They capture our imaginations. It's the way they move. It's their mannerisms, their social rituals. And above all, what really grabs me is their awe-inspiring adaptations. All the penguins live in the Southern Hemisphere, but it doesn't always mean that they live in the ice. I mean, for example, Humboldt penguins actually nest on the margins of the Atacama Desert in Chile, which is one of the few places on Earth where NASA tests out its Mars rovers. Penguins are some of the only seabirds that don't fly, but that doesn't stop them from traveling huge distances because they spend nearly three quarters of their lives at sea. Magellanic penguins, for example, can travel up to 16,000 kilometers a year searching for food. But they've got to come back to land to lay their eggs and raise their young. And they're creatures of habit. They use the same nesting spots year after year, and sometimes inhabit the same colony for thousands of generations. The sheer magnitude of a colony can be staggering. Yet even in these large colonies, like the king penguin colonies on South Georgia Island, a parent and a chick can hear each other's unique calls above the din and find each other in the crowd. The film in March of the Penguins documented the Emperor Penguin's heroic efforts to raise chicks in the heart of the Antarctic winter. But Emperor's remarkable adaptations don't stop there. They're the deepest diving birds in the world. They can reach depths of 500 meters and dive times of up to 20 minutes. And just before a dive, the Emperor races its heart to 250 beats a minute, saturating its body with oxygen. On its longest dives, an emperor can slow its heart rate to a mere six beats a minute. But as the bird explodes from the water at the end of a dive, it again accelerates its heart to 250 beats a minute. To put this into perspective, an emperor endures the equivalent of a human heart attack on each dive, but with no ill effects. I've been studying penguins for more than 20 years and I continue to marvel at their ability to adapt to the worst of conditions. But penguins are a barometer of ocean health and very susceptible to change. They're facing an even greater set of obstacles now. The challenges caused by human industry, these are pressures they've not had to face before. Climate change is affecting, or will affect, every species of penguin. For example, the emperor colony in March of the Penguins has declined by more than 50% since the 70s, due largely to changes in the ice conditions in that part of Antarctica. Their home is literally melting away. In fact, scientists predict that before the end of the century, climate change will cause a 50% reduction of emperor penguin colonies and a 75% reduction of the Delhi penguin colonies around Antarctica. And melting ice is just one example of how climate change can hurt penguins. Changing weather patterns in Punta Tumbo, Argentina have brought increased rain and extreme temperatures. And in the last two years, these changes have been the leading cause of death for Magellanic penguin chicks. But climate change isn't the only danger. Fisheries can have a devastating effect if they target a penguin's favorite prey species close to colonies or damage the health of the penguin's ecosystem. Habitat degradation and introduced predators also can destroy penguin populations, like that of the yellow-eyed penguin, which is now down to only 1,700 pairs. All human disturbances and disruptions, overfishing, non-native animals, disease, pollution, and even the activities of visitors, including us researchers, can present serious threats to penguins. Currently, IUCN lists 11 of the 18 species of penguins as vulnerable or endangered, and the situation is likely to worsen if we don't act soon. The fate of these animals may well come down to what we do next. Uh, the question is, what can we do now? 
We need to reduce or remove fisheries from the waters surrounding colonies. We need to move shipping lanes and resulting pollution away from the areas where the penguins are feeding. We need to stop development and other impacts in and around critical penguin habitat. Thankfully, nations of the world have started to take action in these regards. But the most effective way to protect both our penguins and our oceans is to create marine reserves. Permanent, large-scale, fully protected marine reserves deal with all preventable threats at once. And this is just the opportunity we have in Antarctica. The Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, or CAMLAR, is committed to the creation of large-scale marine reserves. This year, CAMLAR will consider proposals for two massive reserves, one in the Ross Sea and one in East Antarctica, and more proposals are on the horizon. These reserves would be global treasures, triumphs of global collaboration. They would ensure the vision of the Antarctic Treaty itself to conserve Antarctica for all future generations. But further, they would set the stage for our sweeping changes in how we manage oceans generally. And if we really want to protect our marine resources, our penguins, even ourselves, it's time to start.